lecture we are starting the part 3 of in this series. In part 1 we took a look at the details of processor and in part 2 the memory fine. Now this is the third one that is the I O in short uh, input output. Now what are the various things that we knew earlier or we had seen earlier? We saw that CPU is essentially the master of the whole situation. Then you have memory, of course, it is not just one block, but we are talking in fact of hierarchies. And now for the present, we are talking about the third item that is the input output. Okay. Um, really speaking, we have possibly a set of devices or a set of transducers etc coming under this uh, input output category. Now before we go to the other end of this block, let us see uh, whatever we knew or had seen earlier. That is interconnecting these we have the system bus, right. And uh, okay. Now that is the system bus, okay. Now these interact we had already seen the CPU memory interaction and we had also briefly talked about the bus not in detail we will cover that particular thing later on, okay. Now here what we have said is bus is a set of signal lines and uh, this if you can standardize then you can have any type of processor right based on which you can construct a cpu board and you can accommodate different types of memory systems also or memory subsystem to be specific so we need to standardize this particular one now if i say the bus needs to be standardized then obviously it implies that if we have a set of signal lines for CPU memory interaction, then the CPU I/O interaction is not going to be very much different, is it not? Because we have a set of bus signal lines. Of course, uh, we may not use the same set of signal lines, but somewhat similar it will be, right? So, what is it that we knew about the CPU memory interaction? CPU as master of the bus addresses the memory and memory which is always the slave, uh, oh, sorry, CPU as master of the system and is also because of that it is master of the bus, okay. Then memory as a slave responds and uh, let us say it sends the data to the CPU or memory may receive the data from the CPU if the CPU sends. It all depends on whether you have to read some data from memory or write some data into the memory, okay. Now similar thing you can see here, we are talking about this third block that is the I.O. Now it is possible that from this block either some information gets in or some information gets out. Similarly like reading from memory and writing into the memory, we can talk about inputting some information or data okay, from I.O. to CPU and CPU outputs something to the I.O. So the read write of memory is similar to 
input output with reference to this particular block, right? Good. We will uh, talk in detail and also stress upon the differences, right? Now you had seen something similar, and uh, if you recall, right from lecture one, I was telling I/O is nothing but extended memory, is it not? I had also told you why. Uh, what does that? Essentially, memory holds some data which had already been acquired, so we can refer to it as frozen data, right? And CPU may get the data from the memory, let us say. Instead of that, I/O can supply live data or raw data which may be created as and when, right? The external world prepares it, right? So, whereas memory holds frozen data, we can say I O holds live data, okay. Of course, the holds data means what? Through I O CPU will get the data whatever is prepared in the, in the external world. So, in other words, what we are talking about this I O or sitting on the bus is not really the I O device by itself. Just like we are talking about CPU to memory, we are talking about some electronic circuits, right? Some uh, that is CPU generates some uh, rather generates some requests and memory responds, and then we are talking about different speeds, and then we said the cache, for instance, the cache subsystem in the uh, memory is the fastest one, right? And then we are talking about other uh, uh, memory hierarchies also. That is from the fastest to the slowest we are talking about, fine. Similarly, here also we can talk about the slowest device and fastest device and so on and so forth, right. As far as uh, the interaction is concerned, whatever CPU was doing with memory, it can do in a similar way with I O. In other words, what is it it was doing? The CPU was addressing, right, the memory. Now, instead it can address the I O, right, provided we create the necessary facilities, addressing and then uh, it, what it was doing was, it was uh, getting or putting some data, okay. I would say address and get and put data, right, that is what it was doing, right, is read it as. Uh, read or write or input or output, right. So, <coughs> the same way I O also can be dealt with, but then there is a main problem. Because this problem we had come across even in the memory, that is we said that CPU will not be efficiently utilized in case it has to deal with slow memory, correct. And most of the devices, I O devices will be slow. And so, CPU should not get directly involved with this particular one. So, those shown as I O, what we have to look at it as, it is some interface circuitry, right, which can be operated at electronic speed. So, that in case CPU addresses, CPU gets a response at the electronic speed, uh, and then it has to buffer, act as a buffer between the system bus and the actual device, okay, the actual device. So, for each I O device, there is going to be some interface circuitry. We say interface mainly because it is the one which comes in between the actual device, which does the input output and the system bus on which the CPU, okay, is there. So, essentially the CPU will have, to, if at all, there will be some processor, let us say CPU deals with. So, CPU deals with the device not directly, because we do not know about these devices, there can be, uh, these may be electromechanical devices or any other type, right. Whereas, here what we have is a pure electronic system, right. And then we do not know the kind of signals these are generated. The data generated by these uh, may be voltage signals or current signals, it can be any other uh, type also. 
whereas here what we want is essentially something like digitized binary data right all these things will have to be converted and so on this at this end that is at the bus end we can talk about a standard so whether you have one type of device or another type of device on the bus the data that is transmitted between the device and the cpu will have to be standardized which means the uh, the interfacing io okay this is actually a io interface okay this uh, has to absorb all the what we may call as the vari variations of the device or idiosyncrasies of the device okay because some device may be generating only one bit at a time and this it may be doing very slow and some other device may be generating let us say 1k bytes of data at a time it, it all depends okay so all these things will have to be absorbed so that at this end this will be uniform good so though we say cpu memory interaction similar to cpu io interaction remember that io speeds are generally low now when i say generally low it means that there can be some devices which are very fast there can be okay it's all right if uh, the faster the device there is not much of a problem cpu itself can directly deal with only when it becomes slow then we have got to see that the um, interface takes care of that particular problem okay fine now let us go into the details of this what do we have here essentially <coughs> we can say that at the uh, interface from the bus end okay and then this this is the io interface it's not very much about what's going on here and okay here you have the device sometimes it may not be device also it can be a transducer that's also possible okay all right now this is the interface we know now essentially um, we can think of two parts of this interface now i said there are different types of devices okay um for instance this might need uh, some uh, mechanism by which the uh, say uh, something like uh, uh say if it's a floppy disk okay that will have to be rotated right if it's a tape then that uh, tape will have to be bound unbound and then uh, that the whole uh, tape will have to be moved uh if it's uh, something like uh, uh okay disk there is going to be a moving arm moving arm where exactly to position okay all these things are also there these are also part of the io device problem right so there is one set of uh, uh problems which we will not uh, go into detail but i will just indicate generally we can talk about as the device electronic spot okay all that i mention just now uh can be taken care of having the appropriate electronic circuits and that is not really contributing to the data transfer that takes care of say movement of an arm okay by the necessary angle that is required and then uh, uh say moving the or rotating a drum or rotating a tape all these things okay so you have a device electronics part of it which takes care of purely about the device specific information to see that the device can be operated agree now the one which we will be concerned with in our discussion is the other one that is at the bus end what we may call it as a device controller okay the device controller essentially it is the device controller with which any processor or cpu will be dealing 
uh, we will be dealing with during a data transfer. Okay. So, what are the details here? If we follow the same thing as CPU addresses and then gets or puts data or inputs or outputs data, okay. correct, getting data is inputting because uh, the, we always talk with reference to the CPU. When you say read, CPU reads data from memory, CPU writes, CPU writes data into the memory. Now, CPU gets the data from I O that is inputs, CPU puts the data in I O that is output, okay, fine. So, for this particular thing addressing and getting, the CPU will have to actually deal with the controller part of it, okay. So, both are in fact electronic circuits. But this is the one which will take care of the on one side the bus part, okay, whatever standard bus signals, and on the other side it will have to deal with the device specific thing. But then the interface security also includes the device electronics which is specific to the speci this uh, specific device, very specific to that device, okay, good. This also will be specific, but then at one end it takes care of it. This is the one which will deal with the logical part or the data part. This is not going to deal with the data part, it is going to deal with the device part of it, fine. Now, having talked about the device controller and uh, having also said that uh, the CPU IO interaction can be similar to whatever. Uh, was there with reference to CPU IO, uh, sorry, CPU memory, then the device controller possibly will be addressed by the CPU, right. The CPU will address and then uh, the data will have to be transferred in or out, that does not matter, okay. So, we have to create some kind of an addressing mechanism, meaning each device must be identified with a unique code and that is the actual address, okay, some unique code. And then each device will be generating the data, now that data will have to be assembled possibly here and then sent over, because in case this is a bus which can transmit say 16 bits at a time. And in case we have a device which generates one bit at a time, right? Imagine that situation. Suppose the device generates one bit at a time, and here the bus supports 16 bit data part, okay? Would you keep just uh, the moment uh, the device generates one bit will be put? on the 16 bit uh, wide bus and sent, it is going to be wastage of the bus bandwidth. So, it is meaningful for instance, the device to generate 1 bit at a time, so 16 times, so that the device controller will assemble that bit and then the moment 16 bits have been set, the 16 bit will be placed and then sent over, agreed. So, these are the things the controller will have to be taking care of. Now, uh, when I say this, do not forget that there must be some program which is running at the uh, processor end also, because after all CPU is the master of the whole situation. So, the corresponding uh, software right, uh, to make this uh, uh, particular device uh, okay, operable or uh, addressable and so on, that particular one will be called a device driver. Now, this in fact is the software, okay. So, device driver is a software which will be run at the CPU end and this particular device driver will be different for different devices, okay. That is now you can see. There has to be a software run at the CPU end for a given device and there must be an appropriate interface circuitry for that particular device. And that interface circuitry would consist of specific electronic circuitry for ensuring that the device operates, 
okay, which will take care of mechanical moment and all those things. And the electronic part the which is uh, concerned mainly with the data or the logic part of the data transfer, okay, that will be the controller. So, it is actually the device driver okay, when run will generate a code which will be placed on the bus which helps a particular device to be identified and something more will be done, we will go into the detail. And if the data is ready, that data let us say will be, if it is an input device, that data will be passed over the bus and the device driver will receive and route it to the necessary registers. Okay, good. Now, let us go into some detail of the device controller. What is that? The first thing is, uh, let us say, uh, let us not forget about the bus being there, okay, that we should remember all the time. Now, the interface part, the I am going to uh, expand, that is going into the details of it, fine. I said let there be a unique code for identifying the device. It is similar to having one uh, e each memory location having a unique address, right. So, that is first, first of all needed, okay, all right. So, we will just call that as something like a device address, okay. So, there must be a device address, okay. And that is at the other end we have the device, let us not worry about it. So, we are just uh, looking into what is going on at this end. If necessary, we will uh, expand the set of signals that are there, okay. So, that is why I am leaving it blank. Let us see. The CPU places an address and that address will have to move in. For instance, if this is so, then it is possible that the uh, Okay, mm. should I call it device address? Fine. In which case, let us say the incoming address goes into some register, address register. Okay, that is whatever address that has come or that will be generated by the CPU, right, comes over and it goes into this. Now, remember that there may be many devices, so there may be many interface blocks. Okay. For instance, we can assume that when the CPU generates an address, it goes into address register of all the devices on this. Okay. Then, we have a unique device address for this particular. So, this is the address received from the CPU side, whereas this device address is unique for this device. So, if you have 10 devices, we would be having 10 different addresses, just call it address 1, ad I O 1, I O 2, I O 3, something, something unique. So, obviously, these two will have to be compared, right. So, this device, so let us say, then there will be a comparator, should I mark it here? So, just a comparator. So, this address and this, these two will be compared and suppose they are same, this address and then this unique, suppose they are same, okay, suppose they are same, then we say that this device has been addressed. And this of course, can happen uniquely only to one of these 10 different, we assume no, 10 different blocks. So, this particular signal will be up only for one of those 10, all right, fine. Now, that is one part of it, that is we <coughs> are, uh, that is we are saying that CPU is addressing and now one of the devices addressed 
is going to respond. Now, what will it respond with? There are two things. First, we have to worry about the speed thing, right? I said, compared with memory, the devices are generally slow, very slow in fact, very slow. How? For instance, if uh, the, the memory, cache memory can respond, say uh, in uh, 10 nanoseconds or 20 nanoseconds, okay? assuming a device, a keyboard, okay? a keyboard, suppose we have a, uh, this particular uh, interface is a keyboard interface and the device what we are talking about uh, is a keyboard. Okay? Now, keyboard, let us say what is it? If someone types 50 words per minute, we talk about 50 words per minute actually work out a simple calculation assuming. I do not know very much about typing speed, what is normal, 50 words per minute and assuming each word has uh, say some 6 letters, 6 characters. So, we talk about 300 characters per minute, right, 300 letters or characters per minute. Now, a minute consists of 60 seconds, right. So, how many characters per second? We have 60, so 300 by 60. So, we have 5 characters per second, right. In 1 second, there can be only 5 characters sent, that is 5 ASCII codes, remember, 5 codes will be sent, that is what it is. In 1 second, there are only 5 codes that are sent, whereas here, one code will be sent in 20 nanoseconds. Let us see, compare this, 20 nanoseconds, agreed? Whereas here in one second, only 5 codes will be sent. So, look at that uh, enormous uh, speed difference. Of course, we can also talk about a fast device. So, uh, let us work out for a fast device. Say, let us even take display, uh, which is same thing as uh, TV. Now, uh, on one line uh, of the display, one line of the display, so assuming there are uh, 80 characters, okay, 80 characters are there and for each character there will be 5 dots, so assuming one uh, in between, one uh, okay, interval that is inter character space, one bit. So, you have got 6 bits. Okay, 6 bits into 80, that is 480 bits you have on each line, 480 bits. Okay, there is just one dot, that is what it is and the whole thing is going to be scanned in about, uh, I can assume as 60 microseconds, okay, 50 plus it will be. So, 60 microseconds, 480 bits will come. So. Uh, in 60 microseconds, we have got 480 and I am just assuming 60, it will be 50 plus something, okay, 60. So, in other words, in uh, 1 uh, microsecond, we are going to have <coughs> uh, 8, 8 bits, so you are roughly 1 character, one, 1 microsecond we have 1 character, whereas here we had 20 nanoseconds, one character. Here, you have to find out, right? In one second, five characters. So, you can just see, you can talk about uh, the speed. Actually, this is the way we have to analyze, right? Whatever it, that may be said, we are not going to have a device which is as fast as a cache memory. <laughs> that is a very fast, very fast, okay? Fine. So, this we have to remember the speed matters. Now, why we do we talk, why did I talk about speed now? Because the CP is going to address and then one of these will say, oh yeah, I am the addressed device, okay, that same signal will come. Right at that time, fine, right at that time, the device may be doing something, 
because of this enormous speed difference we do not know what the device is doing right so the first thing that has to be checked is what exactly the device is doing is it busy say let us say if it is an input device so let us just without loss of generality okay i can just take that this is an input device okay the same thing holds good for output also no problem let us say if it's input device then the device is busy generating a data right which can be passed on to the cpu at that particular instant when the cpu addresses the device may be busy preparing the next bit of data or byte of data whatever it may be okay so you need to have some information right which indicates the status okay now what we are talking about is a status register which will tell okay which will tell whether the device is busy or whether it is uh, ready with the data okay so this may be shall we assume uh, without difficult uh, much uh, loss of generality okay let us assume that there is an 8 bit status register okay and i'll just assume one bit in that let us say this most significant bit which if it is zero then it is uh, say ready that is the device is ready it's indicating if it is one it indicates that the device is busy okay so there is a status register actually it is nothing but uh, a device status register because it indicates to the cpu whether uh, it indicates to the cpu in general the status of the device and specifically this bit is going to tell whether the device is ready with the data or whether the device is busy okay good so we must have a status register so the moment we have an address device that is a, the moment a, the interface uh, recognizes that the cpu is addressing 8 okay one of the uh, we said 10 no so one of these 10 is going to respond at that instant what it will do the moment this signal comes it will have to check this particular one now how is the checking to be done and who is going to do the checking agreed how is it to be done so now this is where uh, different schemes come so in the first one we will assume that the cpu itself is doing the status checking okay so it is just one what we say as mode of data transfer okay one mode uh, okay, I will say one mode of I O. One mode of I O is the CPU itself is doing the status checking. CPU, let us say, checks the status. How will it do? Okay, this is one mode. The way to do it is the moment this device is addressed this status information must be passed on as the data the status information must be passed on as data to the cpu and the cpu takes that status data and then sees in the, in our case and then specifically sees this particular bit whether it is 0 or 1 by interpreting that it knows that the device is not yet ready with the data or the device is ready with the data agreed now you can see one simple thing here since we have assumed the most significant bit indicating the status of the device what it does is it takes this particular information as the data so this status information will go on the data bus agreed 
the state of the information, this information will be put on the data part of the bus, the CPU will take it in and the moment it goes to the CPU, the CPU will see whether it is 0 or 1 and since it is MSB, 0 means suppose this is treated as a signed data, 0 means plus, 1 means minus no. So, all it has to do is it has to see whether the status data is a positive data or a negative data number, right. If it is a positive number, then it knows that the device is ready with some data. If it is a negative number, then it knows it is not yet ready, okay. Now, what it will do when it is not ready is a different thing altogether, okay. We will not worry about it. So, specifically when we say the, uh, the CPU addresses. Now, we know that the CPU must specifically address the status register and then take the contents of it and then CPU does. In what? In this particular mode, the CPU checks the status, okay. CPU checks the status, this is one mode, just assume. Now, assuming now, the status mode indicates that it is ready with the data. Well, the data must be somewhere, is it not, as part of the device controller. So, we need one more register, which let us say uh, we call it as a data buffer or a data register or whichever way you want to call, okay. So, we have one register, when we say register, do not confuse, it is part of oh, not CPU this part of the device interface, right. This is some interface, part of the interface circuitry, okay, status register. So, this indicates to the CPU whether, uh, just only one thing we have seen, in general it is status, right, because this, uh, there are many bits in the status register, we can use for different purpose, just one for example we are seeing now. Okay, this is fundamental basic thing anyway requirement. So, now you can see assuming the device has prepared the data and then put in the data buffer, then after the device because at this end we have the device is it not, this end we have the device and we have assumed an input device. So, at some point in time the device has, uh, has been ready with the data, it has loaded here and then it would have, uh, it would have set this as 0, meaning that it is ready, okay. Now, I just arbitrarily assume, for instance you can assume this bit to be 1 for ready and 0 for BC also, okay. So, just arbitrarily assume, fine. So, when the status register indicates that it is the device is ready, then it is an indication to the CPU that the data buffer here is ready with the data and from the buffer, oh, the contents of the data buffer will now be placed, will have to be placed on the bus and then over the bus the CPU will take the data. So, that is uh, what is it, an input or read cycle, right, agree. So, for the input device. Now, what is it we have done? We have seen the need for a status register and a need for a data buffer. In fact, specifically it is also like the another register, data register. We call it buffer mainly because the speed of at which the device readies the data is going to be different from the speed of the CPU. So, it acts like a buffer in between and I had also said earlier, we do not know about the characteristic of the device. Maybe the device generates only one bit at a time, whereas on this we have a 16 bit data bus at this end. So, one by one the 16 bits will be assembled and that assembled data now in this case will be available in the data buffer, right when all the 16 bits are ready, the status 
bit will be indicated to show that the device is ready with the data. Okay. Then CPU while reading this knows that it is ready and that we are already seen and when it knows that it is ready, then the data buffer contents will have to be placed. So, now the CPU does it in two steps, is it not? CPU addresses the status register, takes the contents, analyzes and then sees that it is ready or not. If ready, then the CPU addresses the data buffer, okay? addresses the data buffer and then it will read the data contents. Now, it would have got one uh, you may call as uh, one unit of data, whatever it is, 16 bit data may be, 8 bit data may be or whatever it is, is it not? So, essentially this particular one, uh, for this to happen, what is what is going on? Uh, the CPU addresses, gets the status, let us say it reads the status, CPU addresses data buffer, gets the data. In other words, a program is always running at the CPU n. All that the CPU has been doing is whatever it was doing with memory, is it not? Except that it is the, the interface part of the I O that CPU is dealing with. Okay? So, now you can imagine uh, like this, for instance, the status register can be assigned one address, the data buffer can be assigned another address, right? I said some ID, some identification, some unique code. Okay. So, the CPU can place the code corresponding to the status register, read that, CPU next can place the, I mean if ready, the CPU can place the address of the unique code corresponding data buffer, it gets that. How is it different from reading from two different memory locations? It is similar, no? Good. So, now <laughs> CPU IO interaction is not different from the CPU memory interaction, okay? but except that the memory which is usually fast is always ready and whenever the memory is not ready, we had seen that a wait state will be will have to be introduced. Here similar to wait state what we have here is, we indicate that the device is not ready. Okay? So, the CPU reads from the status register and then if the status indicates that it is ready, then the CPU reads from the data buffer. So, in two read cycle or we in specifically the read cycle is nothing but input. So, in two input cycles, the CPU gets the required data, which means your program is running and CPU is controlling the whole situation, is it not? So, this mode of input output okay, is called a programmed I O mode. So, it is called a programmed I O mode in which first CPU checks the status and next, okay, this is the first step and then next it does the data transfer. Okay. Now, this uh, transfer which we were talking about is for the input. So, this is the next step. That is what it has been doing in programmed I O mode. Agreed? This is one of different modes. Now, you can see that the whole thing is taking place at the initiative of the CPU, is it not? Now, earlier we said there may be many devices, right? There may be many devices. In fact, we said, let us say if there are 10 devices, if there are 10 devices. Now, what should the CPU do? CPU possibly addresses the first device, addresses the first device, 
let us say uh, only the third device is ready. First, it addresses the first device and sees it is not ready, finished. Then the CPU addresses the second device from its register, right? Device status register number 2, right? It sees now it is not ready, it sees it is not ready. Then it addresses the third status register. We assume now that the third device is ready. So, it sees that the third device indicates that it is ready. Then immediately the data from the third register will be read. Okay. Now, let us say the device addresses fourth, fifth and so on so forth. Right? Now, that means basically in this programmed I O, okay, in this programmed I O, the CPU takes the initiative and then we can say that the CPU keeps polling among the various devices, right. So, this arrangement programmed I O is also called a device polling mainly because the CPU goes about is another term for it. Is it not? The CPU polls among the devi different devices and then from whichever device, okay, uh, whichever device is ready, which uh, information it gets by looking into that status register, right. So, whichever is ready from that particular device, it takes the data, okay. Uh, we are just a set 10 devices, I mean some of them may be input, some of them may be output. Now, in case it is an output device, situation is not different. What it will do is, suppose this is an output device, then the CPU sees whether the device is ready. It is an output device. When, uh, when the, it says, uh, when the status indicates that the device is ready, then the CPU sends a data to the data buffer and after the data buffer gets the data from the CPU that will be passed on to the output device. Now, while the data is going to the device, the status will indicate that the device is busy. When the data had been completely passed on to the output device, at the end of it the status will indicate that the device is free for the next unit of data. Okay. So, CPU will be outputting the data and then passing it on in the case of output device. Otherwise, the situation is similar. So, same status register and then same data buffer. Agreed? So, in the in this is only one mode in which the CPU takes the initiative. Now, this you must remember that is CPU takes the initiative, okay. CPU takes the initiative. How? That is what has been programmed, okay. The CPU takes the initiative and then polls among the different de devices, okay. CPU takes the initiative in checking device after device. Then, uh, how does it do? It is as per a program. I said 1, 2, 3, 4, it checks. How does it matter? It can be 1, 4, 2, 5, 8, in any order. It all depends on the particular program. That is why it is called a programmed I O, right. Today, you can have the program the way you want. Tomorrow, you can change that. And not only, not only that, I said device 3 is ready, device 1 and 2 it checked and found it was not ready. Now, after it services the device that is after it takes the uh, data from the device because we assumed input device, uh, device 3 after it takes I said it goes to date, uh, device 4. This you can change the program and then say after the data has come from device 3, it can go back and check whether device 1 is ready. Okay, Any order you can do it. That is why we say it is programmed. right? So, the sequence in which the device can be polled entirely depends on the program and that is left to the user. 
Now, what is the problem in this? The problem in this particular thing is the CPU is all the time tied up with addressing one device or another, because most of the time it is just carrying out a device, uh, I mean input output, is it not? Because meanwhile it is not doing anything with the memory. Okay, of course, let us not worry about that particular aspect. If not this CPU, some processor will be doing it. Okay. So, it is not necessary that though it is convenient for us to assume that the CPU is doing it, just change the word a little instead of CPU, just say a processor is doing it. Okay. We will talk about uh, that particular aspect later. So, this is only one mode, IO mode in which the CPU takes the initiative, checks whether the device is ready, if it is ready it affects the data transfer. You say affects the data transfer meaning it can be input or output depending on what that particular device is. Right? Now, there are other modes which we have got to talk about which we will do in the next lecture.